Hey everybody, uh, how you all doing? I know it's been a while. Uh, today I wanted to go ahead and bring you a guide on how to create cinematics within Titanfall. This is something that a lot of people have been asking me to show for a long time, so let's get right into it. Um, there's going to be a little bit of, I guess, like a, like a little lecture I'm going to give you guys, kind of just like some of the content, content, concepts that come... Uh, that come into making all of this and how it all kind of comes together um, to actually create the cinematic. So there's going to be a kind of a little bit of class in session here first before I get into the actual guide. So the thing that we're going to be starting off with is um, a concept called super sampling. So if you're not familiar with super sampling, what that means is forcing your graphics card to render a game or you know just your desktop environment in general in a resolution that is higher than what your monitor is able to display natively and then uh, downscaling that um, back into the resolution that your monitor can display it's you can use it as a form of anti-aliasing it's called super sampling or super sampled anti-aliasing SSAA um, which a lot of people use you know in games that don't have good anti-aliasing options but they have a really powerful cons uh, computer they can super sample the game to a high res and then downscale it back down and it works as like one of the best anti-aliasing methods available um, this period so we're not going to be using this uh, super sampling for anti-aliasing we're going to be using it to record a super high resolution video and then uh, what we're going to do is instead of shrinking that video to fit a 1080p screen um, what we're going to do instead is crop that video, much like you would crop a picture. You know, like if you have a picture with ten people in it and you don't like the three people on the right side, you can crop them out. And the video, re or the picture retains the same quality, but you are just simply cutting information from it. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing, but in the sense of a video instead of a single frame of a picture. So what we're doing here is we're going to be recording at 1440p or 1600p, 4K, whatever your resolution of choice uh, may happen to be. We're going to be recording at a super high res, and then we're going to be cropping our video um, in order to get it back down to a 1080p or smaller uh, format, whichever you're choosing to actually make your YouTube video in. So how all this is going to work is the first thing is, now this is going to be talking with NVIDIA software in mind. If you have AMD software, then you're going to have to change this a little bit to um, accommodate your software, but you know... If you've made it this far in the video, I'm sure you're enterprising enough to get that figured out, but we'll go ahead through the NVIDIA version. So go ahead and right-click on your desktop. You're going to open up your control panel. On the left side, you're going to go to Change Resolution, and then here you're going to have a list of all the resolutions that your monitor is capable of displaying. And the one that is selected is usually your native resolution. Um, so what we're going to do here is actually we're going to create a custom resolution. So we're going to create something that is of a higher resolution than what our monitor can do in order and create the actual super sampling. So go ahead and, you know, as long as your native resolution is selected, go ahead and click on Customize. Uh, you're going to see this white box is going to be blank for you. I have a custom resolution in here because I've already made it, but you are not. So you're going to go ahead and click on Create Custom Resolution. And then in here, you're going to type in the, um, the parameters of the resolution that you want to make. So for me, my monitor is natively 1440p. Um, yours is probably going to be natively 1080p. Most people tend to have a 1080p monitor. So go ahead and for your horizontal pixels, you can go ahead and try typing in 2560. For vertical lines, go ahead and type in 1440. Refresh rate is going to be probably 60, but if you want to record a higher frame rate video, you have a very powerful computer, uh, go ahead and do it. Um, I do 1440p at 90 FPS. My system is a GTX 770, 4 gigabytes. Uh, graphics card made by EVGA along with a 4670K processor i5 uh, overclocked to 4 gigahertz. So that's how I run my system. Um, I also have like I think 24 gigs of RAM so there's that too. Um, so just keep all that in mind that's kind of where I'm at and I'm able to run Titanfall on low settings at 90 FPS you know decently enough. Um, so kind of use that as your baseline for what kind of frame rate you want to be recording but the higher frame rate you record at the better because you can do slow motion and not have um, you know jaggy choppy uh, animation you can have smooth animation recorded uh, slowed down by like 50 percent or 25 percent or whatever so keep all that in mind um, that's all really good for kind of how you end up recording so once you make up a recording you're going to go ahead or a recording you make up a resolution go ahead and click on test a box is going to pop up that asks you you know can you still see your screen is this resolution working 
if it's not working, if your screen is black and remains black, then just simply do not press any button on your keyboard, don't press anything on your mouse, just let it sit for about 15 seconds, and then your computer will revert back to the resolution that you had before. So this is pretty risk-free. You're not going to break anything by doing this. You know, if you if you screw up and it, and it doesn't work, it's just going to automatically revert back because you're not confirming to the software that, you know, that it's a good uh, a good configuration. So once you set that up and apply it and blah, 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 go ahead and close all, close all this stuff out. You should notice that your desktop icons are a little bit smaller. Mine I have hidden because that's just how I like my desktop. And, um... And yeah, and you're going to be running at a higher resolution. So what you're going to need to do next is I use a software called MSI Afterburner to record. You can use it to overclock your GPU, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the main draw of this program is if you go to Settings and then Video Capture, is that it lets you record video at super high resolution at super high frame rates. Um, and there's not a lot of softwares out there that lets you record 1440p at like 90 frames per second. Um, there's just not many out there that do that. Shadowplay doesn't do it. Um, I'm sure OBS will, but it's really hard to set it up to do so properly without like melting your computer. Um, so what I do is I use MSI Afterburner. I use the video format of MJPG compression um, and then the AVI uh, container, but I'm sure you could use MKV if you really wanted, but AVI is just more accessible for more software, I think. Um, Maybe I'm wrong on that, but as far as I've experienced, AVI seems much more accessible. Um, I run at 50% quality. Um, the video looks good enough at that quality. It's not ideal, but I throw enough like effects like motion blur and color correction and blah, blah, blah on my videos that, I mean, eh, yeah. and YouTube kind of destroys your quality as is anyways, so I get by with 50%. This seems to be a nice balance between performance and quality in the video. Play around with this, figure out what works best for you. Um, everyone's configuration is different, so it's going to be different for everybody. The frame rate that I record at is um, actually 120 FPS. I should probably drop that down to 90, um, since I'm actually running my monitor at 90 now instead of 120. Um, just for a more consistent experience because my 770 is not strong enough. But anyways, um, you know, play around with these settings, figure out what works best for you. But as you can see here, these are the settings that I personally use. Um, so you can go ahead and, you know, make make sure you set up your recording cock keys, all that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever, that's done. So the next part, now that you've got all that stuff set up, is to actually go into Titanfall and set up the game. So we're going to go ahead, I'll reconnect here. I disconnected because I was talking for so long. Um, by the way, say hello to my grandfather clock if you've never heard it before. It goes off every 15 minutes. It's very loud. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to a private match. Um, obviously I can't start the match because I'm by myself here. But what I can do is just show you the match settings that you need to use. So you're going to open up your match settings. And literally the only thing that you really have to change is disabling your minimap. That's about it. If your recording does not involve Titans, I recommend setting your first build time to instant and your rebuild time to disabled. That way you can call your Titan down immediately and then eject it, destroy it, and now um, Sarah or Bish or whoever are not going to yell at you about your, your Titan being ready. You're not going to get um, um, a notification on your screen that says your Titan is ready. They're just going to shut up and they're not going to bother you anymore. And all that stuff is going to be off your screen. You don't have to worry about it being there. So, beautiful. You don't have to deal with it. Um, so go ahead and you can apply all that stuff. I'm going to discard it because I don't want to uh, change my default stuff that I have. Um, and then for your pilot loadout, we're going to look at this this last one I have set up here. Um, your primary weapon, you know, your skin that you use, gender, whatever, it doesn't matter. The only things that really matter with this loadout are your anti-titan weapon being the archer rocket. This is the number one most important thing is that you use an archer rocket. This is because archer rocket is the only weapon in the entire game that does not have a aiming reticule, or an aiming reticule, excuse me, um, in the center of your screen. There's just nothing there. Um, and that's really, really important to recording cinematics, because what most people do is they get, like, the wingman, and they still have the dot there, and it's like, no, we see the dot, like, it's, you're ruining your cinematic, and the right way to do it is to get an archer rocket. Um, I use cloak as my tactical ability. Only reason for this is, um, is if when I'm cropping my high-res video down to 1080p is sometimes I'm still gonna have a little bit of um, archer rocket in that corner so if I can put cloak there and then I do a little uh, vignette edge blurring during my cinematics you don't even notice that it's there so um, yeah I just do that and then for my um, first uh, pilot kit I use enhanced parkour kit 
It allows me to wall cling to walls for like 50,000 years at a time, which is great for when you're recording. Because remember, the most important thing when you're recording and creating cinematics is that you want to view events from a perspective that you would not normally view them from during normal gameplay. So you want to create like beautiful content that you're not normally going to see. And I'm sorry about my phone just going nuts on me here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just the general gist of it. Um, so I can't start up the game, but what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and open up. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Here we go. I'm going to open up a recording that I've made at, high, at 1440p resolution, uh, you know, for cinematic. You'll probably remember um, a small section of this from Titanfall Top Place 12. So as you'll notice, um, I'm, rec I'm actually putting, like, what I want to record in the top left section of my screen. And we're going to crop that down and kind of figure out, you know, what we're going to do with it from there. But as you can see, you know, this is a 1440p video displaying at 1080p for you, obviously, but... This is, you know, this is the base, you know, raw video footage that I recorded. So from here, we're going to go ahead. I can exit out of that. Uh, we're going to go into um, Sony Vegas, which is my video editing software. I've already loaded the video into, um, into my browser there. So again, you know, as you can see, here's a video playing. I'm going to delete this audio track because we don't need it. Um, here is just a video playing natively. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to pause it, go back to the beginning, go ahead and open up my track motion, which is going to allow me to, you know, actually, you know, manipulate um, all the video, all the video footage that is in this, um, in this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this out. And as you can see in my preview, I'm expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding and boom. Right there, my Archer rocket is completely hidden. Now, you know, you'll notice I made a boo-boo. I have some frame rate information showing in the top left corner of the screen. Um, so you can do two things to deal with that. You can either do this and just drag it up and hide it like that. Or you can, um, you can leave it um, as it normally was without cutting anything. And you can create a... Um, you can create like a little um, a little blur effect going on right around that text to hide it. Um, either way, it's whatever it's your call. Um, if it's worth it to keep all the pixels, you know, to keep the full resolution of the image in your screen, then um, you know, do what you got to do. You'll also notice there's a little bit of um, a little artifacting in this image um, around the dome on the left side. Uh, you see it kind of stretched a little bit more than what it actually is. That's just because of the little fisheye effect that happens when you um, use a really wide field of view so jury's out on whether it's better to use 90 or 70 for your field of view like at 70 you're going to have the least amount of warping from the fisheye effect but at the same time you're not you're going to have a much tinier field of view so it depends you know it's it's it depends on your own personal taste on how you want to make your video look um, just remember you know we're not playing competitively here you know we're not playing to win we're playing to record something beautiful so it's up to you on how you want to do that um, but as you can see, as I've cropped everything down, we'll go ahead and start playing it all again. And look at that. I don't have any UI elements on my screen. I have a completely open, unobstructed view of Titanfall. And there's nothing there. You know, obviously I have kind of some, some crummy takes here, you know, but there's going to be a couple of good ones coming up that I'm going to actually crop down and I'm going to, or, you know, trim down rather within my video. Right there. That was the one. That was the one that I used. Right there. Boom. So, you know, we can just cut down just to that section and, you know, we can slow-mo that. So let's go ahead and I can, I'll just split there and eh, I'll split there. What the heck? Delete all that stuff out and return this to the beginning. And we'll slow that down. We'll just slow it down to minimum FPS. And it still looks relatively smooth. Like it's, it's you know, it's not ideal. I, you know, I could probably speed that up a little bit more, but look, I mean, that's pretty good. Especially if I put some motion blur on that, that'll look just peachy um let's stretch you know and and this is this is kind of the culmination of my whole little lecture here is we'll see this on repeat let's put this on repeat you know and this is going to keep going over and over and over and just look how nice this ended up coming out you know well actually let me let me refresh my zooming in here so you can actually see how nice it came out uh it's, i don't know why i undid that let's do that and then we will just hide that and boom now let's keep replaying it, and you'll see. I mean, this is what the, the resultant cinematic will look like. You know, it's a little a little choppy. I can go and uh, turn off my resampling. I'm sure that'll help. Um, I'll probably speed it up a little bit more. I can add some motion blur to it, some color correction and stuff going on there to kind of um, 
gets your eye off of like some of the jagged lines that are in the far background because again you know i am only recording at 1440p i'm not doing like 4k or something like that so if you you know the higher resolution your original recording is at the better um my system i can only really handle 1440p but that's pretty much the fundamentals of it guys um i know this has been a long video but hopefully you get the you know you get the whole idea of what we're trying to do here and how we're going to accomplish it and what we need to do in order to make this happen um so thank you guys for watching i hope you learned something new you know let me know down in the comments um you know how you're using this to um you know create better whatever stuff for yourself and um you know if you make some cool cinematics using this then you know again leave me a link down in the comments you know let me know what you're making and um i'd like to see it see what you guys come up with uh so anyways guys thank you all for watching and uh we'll see you next time y'all take care